memory does that thing have? This one's got 32K. <laughs> uh, so yeah, as I said, the HDK uh, is a um, package which supplied as an open source thing, containing all the things you need to know and you want to create your own PCP, your own, your own platform. So hi, so who are you? So I'm Dominic Pike, I'm with ARM. Um, and so what you were just looking at there is the embed platform. Uh, and the lady there obviously has an animated dragon on her shoulder, it's Halloween, it's to be expected. So embed is all about enabling rapid development of internet connected devices. So everyone's been talking about the Internet of Things and how it's going to be a big, a big thing. Embed's there to speed up the process of, you know, if someone's got an innovative idea, they want to connect it to the cloud, they need microcontroller, they need some sensors, they need some communications, could be Wi-Fi, could be uh, maybe Zigbee, Bluetooth, cellular. Yeah. Um, and so Embed's there to allow the developers to very quickly compose these designs and get something in, in a working form. And so that's going to you know, form a proof of concept that can get them funded, uh, potentially, or just demonstrate to their boss that this, this idea can fly. So this is the idea of Embed. Um, Dan's demonstrating it there. So there is a... Yeah. Um, there's what is this? Thing so this is an Embed-enabled board. There's a number of different boards available. Um, this one happens to be the LPC 1700-based one. So this is an NXP part based on the ARM Cortex-M3. Uh, ARM Cortex-M family is obviously very low power, easy to use. Um, we're seeing Embed in a number of interesting new developments. Actually this week, uh, Nordic Semiconductor uh, licensed Embed and have announced this. And Nordic do so the Bluetooth LE, so you know for accessories, wearables, or you know, the kind of gadgets that will link up to your smartphone or tablet and have an experience beyond just the, the device itself. That's exactly where we, we see uh, the Nordic parts with Embed going into, so this is really exciting news. Cool. How about uh, we check the wall of things you have here behind? Wall of things? What is yeah, that? I'm, I'm not the wall of things guy. I'm hoping there's a... Uh, someone who can guide you for exactly what these demos are, but I can tell you in principle, yeah. that things, applications in industrial or urban type environments, the idea here is you have intelligence at the sensor node, yeah. you have uh, measurements taken in a, in a large system, the system could be street lighting, it could be, you know, agriculture could be monitoring moisture in the ground, could be all sorts of other different applications. And the idea is yeah. to improve efficiency of the total system. And this is a couple of demos in terms of, uh, I think this is energy smart, energy monitoring. Actually, okay. you know, this is my friend Chad here. Chad, Chad, hey. Chad can talk about this stuff. Topic. <laughs> hey, good. can you talk about stuff? I can talk about stuff and junk. <laughs> and I, junk? Have, uh, I have both kinds. I have a full knowledge set of stuff and junk. Absolutely. So what is this? It's stuff. Oh, actually, I know what this that is. That one's next to John. You know what this is? <laughs> I know exactly. Oh, wireless cow yeah. digestion monitoring system. Yeah, so yeah, this, this is for monitoring the health of, of dairy cattle. Um, and the idea is it's inside of the cow. It's it inside the, the cow. Exactly. The, the process of putting it in the cow, we should not dwell on. But the important <laughs> thing is that the farmer can then remotely monitor the health of their, their yeah. flock or their, their herd of, of, of cows and make sure that you know, they're healthy, they're, pro they're productive, and it's good all around. And yeah, how long yeah, does it last? It lasts for a long time until the cow gets killed? Um, I think these are dairy cattle, so we hope that they have a very happy retirement in pastures and So it lasts for kind of several story. years. Yeah. All right. Very nice feed, you know, as yeah. well. Actually, it's also for the determination of salmonella as well, which has been a problem, you know, out, that we've seen in an outbreak in multiple uh, types of agriculture and uh, through the cow herds as well. So uh, that's a really interesting solution, knowing that some of this goes inside. <laughs> you know, and, and some of couch. this goes in. And so this, this board here, you may remember from earlier, is our friend the Embed board. Yeah. And so this has got a uh, Cortex M0 Plus, I think. That's, this would be... So another low zero power mic. <laughs> <laughs> I think you that the antenna zero. on the cow? No. The, no, I'm sorry? The antenna is not... On the cow somehow. No, it's, it's outside, and that's what yeah. I believe this is the actual uh, receiving end, the gateway end of the sensors that are inside of here. All right. Yeah. What else is here in the wall? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, this isn't my wall. <laughs> it's not your wall. So, ARM Internet of Things solutions, a whole so, bunch of things here. Yeah, you can see a lot of prototype connected end devices there with ARM Embed. And yeah. again, so the same basic microcontroller, but very different applications, different sensors, different use cases. 
up here. Yeah, yeah, we got some, we got some <laughs> interesting stuff here. And uh, here, uh, oh, weightless. That's, that's a, this is Grunfoss. Yeah, I, mean, I know Grunfoss. We've been talking to them actually. What does that do? Uh, so Grunfoss, uh, actually, they're doing energy monitoring. It looks out of here as well as CO2 uh, monitoring. Grunfoss also produces a large number of pumps. Uh, so they will actually can monitor and control the flow of their pumps uh, as well through an Internet of Things solution. Um, nice. they, we're talking to uh, a few of the cloud providers as well, including Zively, uh, about putting their data uh, through that and normalizing it for applications. This is a Danish company there. Yep. So this guy here, Weightless. Yeah. So this is interesting. This is, um, so obviously you know that the uh, analog TV channel has been yeah. turned off across a lot of different regions. And so the idea of using that uh, freed up spectrum for broadcasting data yeah. only. Uh, so managing that free um, spectrum an allocation across across the world and using it. Weightless is a kind of play on words, I think. So, you know, you've got 2G, 3G. I think they're saying you go back to an even slimmed down model and it becomes 0G, weightless. So, this All right. is, so the idea here is, obviously, uh, that kind of uh, frequency can penetrate into basements. So for smart metering type applications could be useful there. Um, yeah, so this is really interesting in terms of like, very wide areas, low cost receivers for um, transmitting data and stuff like smart meters. So uh, your, your, your uh, role, uh, what does it say on your badge? I'm, I'm an embedded, yeah. I'm an embedded guy. So my background, actually I, I joined ARM 10 years ago. I used to be in the process design, design group. Uh, I then moved into product marketing, so I launched the Cortex N0. So very focused on low power microcontrollers. Uh, RF parts and smart sensors. And now I'm in segment marketing, so I'm looking more at who's using these things, what kind of end markets are they enabling. And so Internet of Things is part of that. So you launched the Cortex M0. I am, when was that? I'm a big fan of the Cortex M0, M0 Plus, actually the whole Cortex M range. What is, when, when was it launched? M0 Plus was launched last year, so that was, I think it was last February. What's special about M0 Plus? M0 Plus, so, I mean, Cortex M in general, you can get microcontrollers now two millimeters squared. Actually, our friends at Freescale just over there have a KL2 part. It's literally two millimeters by 1.9 millimeters squared. It's a 32-bit processor. You imagine the amount of different potential applications you can embed this in, and you'll understand why people are very excited about the Internet of Things and the possibilities there. Um, being Cortex-M, it's very easy to use. You saw our embed as a way of developing on that kind of device, and very low power. So if you look at the wearables that are around today, so um, you know activity trackers and this kind of thing, you crack them open and often you'll see a Cortex M microcontroller inside because of that low power ability. So this is why I like Cortex M. Cool. So there's a huge future for that. Is 100 billion devices? We, you know, I think there was the ARM partnership together last year shipped in the region of 1.9 billion Cortex M devices. So not all not all of those are connected today, but we believe with the Internet of Things, more and more of them will be. It can be even smaller, Cortex M0 Plus? Uh, Cortex M0 Plus is already pretty small, so two millimeters square, that's, you know, that was designed for a swallowable product. And I know there's even research products doing one millimeter cubes, and this is for implantable medical devices using Cortex M. 